Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about NFL Week 17 Power Rankings and Prediction Analytics. And we are finally here. This is the final week of uh, NFL Draft Pick'em, or predictions, if you will, based on analytics. Um, towards the end of the season, so probably sometime in February, I'm going to do a final analysis in terms of how I did each week pick-wise uh, to give you kind of a grand total in terms of how many how many wins were predicted versus losses using the system. And just general wrap-ups and thoughts about the overall uh, thing. Uh, so if you've been with me since the beginning, again, I, I, I can't thank you guys enough um, for checking out the content here in terms of the NFL uh, data. I'm going to be doing playoff data. So I'm still going to be doing videos, uh, basically NFL related videos when it comes to analytics, but I'm going to be more focused on the playoff teams, the wild cards, uh, that kind of stuff. And I'm actually going to get into what Super Bowl contending teams looked like based on data and which teams in the playoffs are more in common or more with those Super Bowl winning teams, if that makes any sense. So basically looking at the teams that are in the playoffs and then looking at what they have in common with teams uh, related to that. And on top of that, I'm going to be doing final season wrap up videos in terms of each individual team. I'm going to be going through every team, looking at their data, uh, showing the strengths, weaknesses, areas to improve, uh, potential areas to, to, to think about when it comes to free agency and draft prospects and that sort of stuff, and then just the overall view of the team going forward, you know, how bad or how good the year was relative to all the other teams over the last couple decades when it comes to NFL data. Uh, so with all that stuff out of the way, you may know me or may not, but each week I collect all of the current 2017 NFL team data in order to analyze and project potential NFL performance. And since it's a weekly collection, there's always going to be some variation between various data points. However, there's always going to be little nuggets of truth that could become bigger nuggets of truth as the season continues. So stick around as I analyze each week's matchups, including playoffs. And if you are new to the channel, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So. For this week, we're basically just going to go over the power rankings and then the the matchups uh, for the week. Uh, starting with the power rankings, again, power rankings just deals with a overall general team strength score based on every single team uh, since the 1998 NFL season uh, based on various data points. So you can go to the description if you want to know what those data points are, at least that you have your own reference so you can look, you can pause the video look at the chart, look at the data, and then make your own sort of conclusions and give you some ideas and stuff like that. But based on the data, not a lot has really changed. Uh, the Ravens continue to go up. I will say that much. The Ravens have, have gone from being a, uh, a middle-of-the-road team to in the top 10. Um, so that they've definitely kind of risen more as, as the season has gone on. Uh, the Cowboys are starting to rise a little bit. Uh, the Falcons are kind of staying kind of where they are. But um, for the most part, these are the teams that are kind of raising a bit when it comes to data. Oh, and, of course, the 49ers as well. They're another team that went from being one of the worst teams in the NFL uh, to now they're, uh, you know, a 50-50 team. And if, and if not even that, they might even be better than that. Uh, because of Jimmy Garoppolo's and uh, Kyle Shanahan's sort of chemistry kind of coming on late. Um, so they're, they're definitely a team to kind of watch and see what happens in the future because of uh, all the success they're having. But these are the power rankings. In terms of the predictions for the week, uh, here are all the uh, games this week in terms of matchups based on the data, based on all the available data. Um, you can go through here and kind of look at things. But in general, um, the Lions are favored over the Packers. Uh, the Vikings are favored over the Bears. The Texans are favored over the Colts. Steelers over Browns. Patriots over Jets. Uh, Redskins over Giants. Uh, Eagles over Cowboys. Uh, Jaguars over Titans. Bills over Dolphins. Ravens over Bengals. Chargers over Raiders. 
Seahawks over Cardinals. Uh, Rams over Seahawks. Well, not Rams over, no, not Rams over Seahawks. Um, Seahawks over uh, Cardinals, like I said. And then uh, Rams over 49ers, excuse me. Uh, the Panthers over the Falcons. The Chiefs over the Broncos. And then finally, the Saints over the Buccaneers. Um, so those are all the data picks for this week. The one thing I will add, though, is because it is the final week of the season, you know, it's week 17, who knows what's going to happen. Players get put on IR. Players only play half a game uh teams decide to bench starters uh it just gets kind of wacky in week 17 so um I, I would say that this is probably going to be one of the more unpredictable weeks when it comes to data just as it was last week to a certain extent so but these are the picks for the week uh based on the overall data some of these games are pretty close some of them aren't um but definitely kind of a fun week uh fun week end of games uh to uh, say the least when it comes to data um, as for me, um, so this is just kind of a PSA, a public service announcement in terms of what the future of the show uh, will encompass. As I stated before, I'm going to be doing NFL specific, NFL team specific videos in terms of what went wrong based on data and then where can they, where they can improve because that's the biggest thing. I don't want my videos to just be you're bad and you're bad and you're bad and you're bad. I want the videos to be your bad and here's where you can improve. Here's the areas that you need to be targeting in the draft. Here's the areas that you need to be targeting in free agency and to kind of build it from that standpoint so that I'm not just letting you know about all the problems you have on your roster, but I'm actually providing some solutions. You know, you don't want to bring up a problem unless you have a solution. At least that's what I've always, uh, that's the philosophy I've always uh, tried to uh, follow. So that's definitely going to be content coming in the future. Of course, there's going to be a ton of draft content. I'm, I'm wrapping up a lot of draft data work in terms of, of uh, birthdays for age-related data. Um, that is always a tricky thing around this time of year. Um, a, finding out the birthday of a prospect is by far one of the hardest things to get when it comes to the draft um, this early. So um, a lot of times you don't really get an accurate birthday until they actually are in the NFL. So... Um, you know, for whatever reason, they keep birthdays pretty close to the vest in terms of schools, etc. Uh, but uh, you definitely need it um, to get a good idea in terms of upside and other sort of variables. Um, you know, age in many ways is a, is a important variable. It's a very misunderstood variable, though, um, when it comes to overall data. But yeah, I'm definitely wrapping up NFL draft content. I'm going to have Shrine Game content. Uh, I had uh, media credentials approved for the Shrine Game, so I'm going to be covering the Shrine Game. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, a couple player interviews and just kind of giving you a general data perspective about the Shrine Game. So to be honest, it's kind of weird for me to go to the Shrine Game uh, because the stuff that I do, I really don't have to be there based on the, the stuff that I do when it comes to data and other sort of things. I mean, I definitely go there to network and meet people and meet other writers and do stuff like that and talk with players, of course, which is always very important. Um, but the actual important things about the Shrine Game to a guy like me are things that don't happen at the practices. They're things that happen uh, in terms of measurables, arm length, hand size, weight, height, stuff like that. So that's more so what why the shrine game is so important but but definitely kind of notifying you guys i am going to be covering the shrine game uh i am going to be going to the senior bowl as well uh, not interviewing anybody but just going there to, to watch it and of course keep track of it uh also keeping track of the nflpa game uh and though there will be videos about those particular uh uh bowl games as well so i'm not quite sure if i'm going to be doing individual player profiles for those games or positional profiles for those uh, particular games or just one big video kind of covering everything um, but i'm definitely going to be doing a lot of videos related to that stuff as well so tons of content coming this way on top of the free agency uh, uh guide that's coming out soon as well so i'm going to be dropping a free agency uh analytics guide which is going to have all the guys that are hitting free agency and what their data looks like and all the other kind of perspectives. So be on the lookout for that as well. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. 
uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.